Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, is the revelator once again. And hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We are coming from a very exclusive sermon presentation where I explained about the watchers and the gatekeepers. And I explained about two realms. The realm on the ground of the earth where the gatekeeper is in charge and the realm in the firmament where the watcher is creative and flexible. And today, we want to enter into yet another significant sermon presentation inside the Word of God. And today, I want to talk about the author of confusion. The author of confusion. And there is no other author of confusion who is none other than Lucifer the devil. And I'm going to be explaining how the author of confusion instills that confusion, disorder, misunderstanding inside the Church of Jesus Christ. So for us to understand more on this presentation, let us get into scriptures in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. And it reads, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. The scripture that I'm reading here is precisely saying he that speaks with an unknown tongue does not speak to human beings. He speaks unto God. But there is a level in which a God can be found inside a human being. And you start speaking in a tongue with what you presume to be a human being, yet it be a God. If the scripture is saying, he that speaks in, in, with a tongue only communicates with God, he speaks about a mystery of those that speak in a tongue with the spirits. But he that prophesies speaketh not unto men, but for the edification and exhortation and comfort he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesied edifieth the church. The reason why the scripture is saying he that speak in a tongue speaks unto himself, but he that prophesies speaks unto the church is because the tongue is not a solved language. A tongue is an unresolved language. Therefore, if you are speaking in a tongue, which is a language that is not resolved, a tongue which is unknown, you are speaking to yourself. If you speak in a tongue that you don't discern, if you speak even in a tongue which is genuine, which is a tongue of God, yet the church does not hear what you are saying. You don't edify the church, you edify yourself. But when you prophesy, prophecy brings clarity to the church. Confusion begins when you speak in a tongue and you don't want to be lectured about your tongue. Confusion begins when you speak in a tongue and you don't want to know what that tongue means. Confusion begins when everyone in church is speaking in tongues and you have visitors in church who are less privileged to hear what the church is saying and even the church itself does not understand what it is saying. I'm talking about the author of confusion. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 5, how would that you all speak with tongues but rather you prophesy it. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Apostle Paul is not restricting tongues, but he's saying greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks in a tongue. Why? Because it is less profitable for the church, for the whole church to speak in tongues which they don't understand. So it is more profitable for the church 
to speak in tongues if there be an interpreter like the revelator. I have explained that there are only two men that I have seen who can interpret tongues, who don't only interpret tongues, they can communicate with the spirits using tongues, not just praying in tongues, but speaking in tongues. And that is the revelator. Mysteries and revelations. A John Anosik, Pastor John Anosik, a revelation ecclesia. And that has nothing to do with the breaking. It is certain clarity. I've honored different men of God who are in their special areas of spiritual speciality. Explained how prophet angel is a star in the prophetic office. I've explained how prophet Makandio is a star in the teaching office. I've explained how Pastor Chris is a star in the area to do with the word clarity. So everyone is given a certain office. But when it comes to the area to do with the speaking in tongues, this is something that you can find almost the whole church doing. But if they don't have an understanding, they don't want to seek for an interpreter. But wait before you seek for an interpreter. You have to discern what is coming out of your mouth. And the author of confusion, who is called Lucifer the devil, is there to maintain you in that confusion and make sure that you don't seek clarity. You strengthen each other in those lies while it's in the church. And you make yourselves believe that what you are doing is correct when it is wrong. Apostle Paul is saying, I'll have it that you speak with the tongues if there be an interpreter. But it is better that you prophesy. For he that prophesies is greater than he that speaketh with an unknown tongue. Except there be an interpreter. Except be, there be a translator. That the church may receive edifying. So that the church also may receive profit spiritually. So that the church may know what is happening. Now, brethren, tell me, if I come unto you speaking with the tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? You hear what the scripture is saying? What shall I profit you if I just come speaking in a tongue? If I break, if I be one that is breaking, that I now speak in tongues, but I don't know what I'm speaking about. Unless I speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge, meaning that revelation is a language. Revelation is a language of clarity. Knowledge is a language of clarity. Prophecy is a language of clarity, which clarifies to, to the church so that the church understands what is happening. But when the author of confusion comes, the author of confusion does not want the church to receive clarity. He wants the church to continue in that disorder. It doesn't end in that area of confusion when the church is operating without clarity. Explained about a church in, in Ephesus where Apostle Paul went and he, he is asking them, have you received the Holy Spirit when you believed? And I thought the church was either going to say yes or no. But the church goes ahead to say we have not even heard about the Holy Spirit. So that you understand the level of crisis and chaos that was inside that church. It's one thing for the church to know the Holy Spirit, but they have not received it. This church did not even know the existence of the Holy Spirit. This church did not even know automatically that Jesus had come. This church only understood the baptism of John. Meaning that this church only knew about a man. They did not know about the Holy Spirit. And it was already a church. And you can imagine what level of confusion was inside that church. And after Paul realized this, he prayed for them and the Holy Spirit fell upon them. After the Holy Spirit fell upon them, the author of confusion did not leave the church because the, the, the disciples had received the Holy Spirit. 
all of them they started claiming that they were called including the business people including the cleaners including those that do deco including those that are supposed to just sing including the ushers all of them they were claiming that they can drive out demons that is another level of, of confusion which gives evidence of disorder in a church when everyone now claims to do one and the same thing it's just like when the whole boat of christ is claiming to be made up of prophets where are the evangelists where are the apostles where are the teachers where the, are the interpreters where are the translators where are the businessmen where are the administrators of the church the church must not have that level of disorder lest it be a church that has been hijacked or a church that has been invented by the master and the author of confusion now brethren tell me if i come unto you speaking with the tongue what shall i profit you except i shall speak to you either by revelation or by language of knowledge prophesying or doctrine and even things without life giving sound whether pipe or up except they give a distinction in the sounds how shall it be known what is being piped i was watching a teaching from pastor john anosike i just enjoy watching his teachings why because he is creative and when he's teaching he is one man that has got a depth in the things that he teaches i've explained this before i can watch any preacher as long as they are making sense as long as they are not ignorant and he's saying he was listening to the sound of a bed during odd hours of the night and upon listening to the sound of a bed during odd hours the bed was making its usual sound you know the usual sounds of the bed and it, that usual sound of a bed it gave him a language it was not just a sound obviously if that sound was being listened by someone else what that person would have heard in the canal was just a sound of a bed the sounds of a bed that they do in the morning but this sound of a bed was heard during odd hours it was midnight and he was able to interpret what the bed was trying to say to him and he tuned his spirit to understand what the bed was saying and the sound of a bed gave him the language of what the bed was trying to say and the bed was actually actually saying there is a snake in the campus but the rest of the campus if they heard that bit what they were hearing was a sound so what i'm simply trying to say is is if the campus was a church of men and women that only hear the sound of a bed and they continue praying it means the church can be invaded by the author of confusion and the author of confusion can take over the church and run the church taking advantage of the confusion in church lest the church has got an interpreter a translator one that is able to understand the mystic not languages only but the sounds the only way that the author of confusion can enter the church is when the church is ignored a certain gift of the spirit don't just be a church that is made up of people that claim that i'm also gifted i also hear from god almost the whole church now everyone wants to be nominated in spiritual gifts but do you know that there is administration do you know that in church there are cooks do you know that in church there are ushers do you know that in church there are witnesses there are so many roles in the church of jesus christ which have nothing to do with the prophesying or speaking in tongues you are not being restricted to speak in tongues but can you discern do you have the spirit of discernment you are speaking in tongues for more than five hours speaking in tongues but you can't discern what you're saying and what is that profit to the church and yourself what if you have been cursing yourself what if you have been rebuking yourself and this is not just only about tongues this is about the church having an understanding of what is happening for if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound who shall prepare himself to bake so likewise you expect 
you utter by a tongue words easy to be understood for how shall it be known what is being spoken the, the, the scripture is saying for if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound who shall prepare himself to bake yesterday the disciples gathered and they did an intercession prayer without my instruction not that they are supposed to intercede under my instructions only no they gathered they mobilized yet it was not a planned thing but they just gathered randomly and there was a manifestation of a serpent and there was a disciple who had had that dream before that gathering and the dream that he, she had this is a female disciple who had this dream the dream that she had elaborated the fact that there was a snake that had come in the midst of the disciples and all the disciples they failed to defeat that snake prince michael was only able to eat that snake and that snake is the author of confusion that had entered amongst the disciples prince michael one of the disciples was only able to hit the tail of that snake and then another disciple who is a partner of the ministry are you getting what i'm saying was the one that was now holding the snake a partner does not wrestle with the snake a partner ministers finances it does not wrestle with the snakes and what happened in that vision according to the female disciple as she elaborated the dream was that the partner ended kissing up the snake why and i started asking myself what is the meaning of this dream and the lord said when you give the tools of the plumber to the baker that is what happens he ended up kissing the snake not because he wanted to kiss the snake this is not a vision is because the vision is simple saying he is now doing what he is not supposed to be doing not because he is disrespecting the revelator no he wasn't disrespecting the revelator because this was a random session that happened so there was a manifestation of a serpent and one of the female disciples started chasing that snake but they couldn't see the snake they were assuming by hearing what was coming out of the mouth of that disciple but what they didn't realize is that the snake had already entered one of them and i only had the capacity and the promise to prove to them that i'm going to be exposing that snake in the next session so what is happening what is happening is simple the devil is able to come and cause disorder if he comes and causes disorder it's not yet enough until he becomes the author of confusion when he becomes the author of confusion he has come with a mission to destroy you become disorganized you no longer know your roles you just do things random without instructions without being given permission you just speak in tongues without any interpreter you just pray amiss do you know that for you to drive out a demon you must know what type of a demon you are going to drive out do you know that before a demon manifests you are supposed to know what type of, of a demon is going to manifest do you know that in the silence of a demon there is a language that is being spoken by a demon do you know that there is never a moment that god is quiet god can be speaking in silence he can be heard. same applies to demons demons can be speaking even before manifestation i can communicate with the demons but you can only hear demons when they have manifested in someone which is very dangerous do you know why because demons are going to lie to you how are you able to interpret that this is a snake inside a person just because the person is, is spoke about a snake how are you able to know that you you conquered the snake did you see it spiritually or you assumed how did you conclude that in the spirit you see there are things that need 
one that is anointed for that area to be present. Even those that are sewing clothes, they've got a department. There is one that does the patterns. There is one that does the collar. I'm talking about the Port of Christ. Even those that are mechanics, there is one that does the auto, who only specializes in the electrical areas that influence the well-being of a car. There's the mechanic side. There's he that does engine overall. Even in building, there's he that does the door frames. He that does the windows. He that does the, the building of constructing the walls. He that does the construction. He does, that does the mapping, the plan before the building. Everyone is given his or her role for the benefit of the body of Christ. But your problem is that you, you want the greater gift, and which is the greater gift? And according to you, the greater gift is prophesying. This is why all of you want to be prophets. Yet the church has got several roles. I explained in one presentation how the church has got many roles. Way too many roles. Way too many roles more than the fivefold ministry, which has been explained to you. Therefore, if I don't know the meaning of the voice or whatever is being done in that church, I shall be unto him that speak a foreigner or a barbarian. And he that speak unto me shall be a foreigner also. Even so, for as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying and the understanding of for the sake of the church. You don't just enter into spiritual things without being permitted, without being mentored, without being given knowledge and understanding. You need to be equipped with the understanding. Wherefore, let him that speak in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Wherefore, let him that drive out a demon seek spiritual wisdom and understanding way before the demon manifests so that he may not be deceived by a spirit. Wherefore, let him that drive out a demon be careful because you are dealing with dangerous spirits. What if they attack you? What if something happens to the one that you are praying for? What if that demon that you have provoked remains in your house with a mission to attack you? There are so many consequences that cannot be counted by one that is just zealous for a spiritual gift. With the way that you love your family, the way that you listen to your wife, the way that you listen to your husband, the way that you want to protect your children and you want to drive out demons. Do you know the consequences? I'm not threatening you. I'm just making you conscious to understand what you, you, you are getting yourself into, what you must get yourself into, what you must prepare yourself for if you want to get in, inside these battles. Why? Because you're not told the whole story by preachers. You only see preachers driving out demons. You don't know the life that we live behind the scenes. You don't know that they are sleepless nights, fighting back the demons that will be we will we will have dri driven out of you. You don't know our lives behind the scenes. There is unrest. There is misery. There is rejection. There is loneliness. There, there are sleepless nights. You don't want. You can't live like that. You don't even want to stay away from your own relatives, but you want to drive out demons. You think it's driving out demons it gives luxury. You need to be careful. You are not being restricted to drive out demons, but you need to take this into consideration that there are consequences and you must be prepared for them. After driving out demons, when a demon strikes your son or your daughter, will you not look up to your mentor to ask him why, why, why that happened? Will you not question yourself and link up to an activity that you did without permission. 
What is it then? I'll pray with the spirit. I'll drive out demons with the spirit. I'll pray with the understanding. I'll sing with the spirit. I'll partner in spirit. I'll not just do things carnally. That is what Apostle Paul is saying here. Now, for you very really give things well, but the other is not edified. That comes to a level where we then expect people to give testimonies so that whatever has been done in the spirit can edify others. At one moment, I was speaking with a demon in mystic tongues. Whole session for hours, driving out all men of spirits. Then there was a moment I gave the parents a chance to give their testimonies. Then Apostle Paul is saying, yet in the church, I'd rather speak with five words, with my understanding, that my voice, that I might benefit others, that I might teach others, than speaking ten thousands of words in an unknown tongue. It is allowed to just speak with the five words that you understand, than trying to speak with the tongues that you don't understand. You can't even hear the tongue that you're speaking. But you want to continue speaking in a tongue that you don't understand. You want to prove to the revelator that you can speak in a tongue that you, you, you don't understand. The author of confusion. When the author of confusion is entered inside church, he doesn't allow you to make any considerations. He makes you believe that whatever you are doing is correct. Brethren, let us not be children in understanding. How about in malice? Be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written, with the men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak unto these people. How will he speak unto the people if the people don't have understanding? Then it must be an interpreter. And those that speak with other tongues, they must understand what they are saying unto the people. Yet for all that will, they will not hear me. That's what the scripture says. He says, I will speak unto you with other tongues. Yet the disaster is that you shall not understand me. Yet the crisis that will be there is that the church will not understand. God had already known that he will speak unto his people. And yet for all that they will not hear him, says the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe. But prophesying saveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. How can you believe when you don't understand? It means you have to understand. And prophecy is there to make you understand so that you believe. This is why tongues are for them that don't believe. Why? Because you are not hearing anything, so you won't believe. If therefore the whole church come together into one place, and all of you are speaking in tongues, and there comes someone who is unlearned, who is just a businessman, who is just an unbeliever, who is just a critic, will you not say you are all made? Why? Because you're just speaking in tongues. You're just driving out demons and you don't know what you're doing. You don't even know what men of speech you have driven out. You're just listening to demons speaking and you don't even know that at this level the demon is now deceiving us. You're only listening to what the demon is saying. You don't have discernment to even measure what that demon is saying. But if all prophesy and they come in one that believeth not or one that is unlearned, he is convinced of all and he is judged of all. And by so doing, all the secrets of the heart are made manifest, and falling down on his face, he will worship God. You can only reach the level of testifying, or falling down to worship God when you have understanding of what is happening in the church of Jesus Christ. How is it, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm? This is the part that I've been waiting for in this presentation. How is it that, brethren, when you come, every one of you has got a psalm. Every one of you has got a doctrine. I was once told by a certain disciple called Hilary, who is in the dry places. He told me that I've got my own doctrine. And I hope he's listening. In the scripture here saying, how about, brethren, one of you has got a psalm, another has got his own doctrine, another has got a tongue, another claims to have a revelation, and another is claiming to interpret. And Apostle Paul is saying, let all things be done for edifying. Now, what Apostle Paul is simply trying to say is, 
one is, is claiming to be a prophet one is now claiming to speak in tongues one is claiming to also to be driving demons and you have three of them at the same time wanting to do that what is going to happen in the church what is going to be given birth unto his disorder the author of confusion will be now on the pulpit the author of confusion takes over the church and he will now be in charge if any man speak in an unknown tongue let it by two or three people that will be speaking but let one interpreter let one translator let one judge judge at the end if anything be revealed to another that sits by let the first hold his peace if there is anyone that wants to send his dream to me don't interrupt his dream don't translate his dream don't speak his dream don't speak on behalf of him or he. it's not your dream let him record his dream hold your peace for you may all prophesy one by one it may happen so that you may all learn but there can only be one prophet and one interpreter speaking not at the same time and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets do you know what that means is that you cannot know what spirit is prophesying in a prophet until the interpreter the translator the revelator comes to judge the prophets using interpretation for god is not the author of confusion for god is not the author of confusion who is the author of confusion as i'm now wrestling and racing to conclusion who is the author of confusion the author of confusion is lucifer the devil for god is not the author of confusion but of peace of knowledge and wisdom and sanity in all churches and saints and the scripture then says let your women keep silence in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak do you know why because the woman that is being regarded here is the wife who is called the church let all the women keep silent who is the woman the woman is the church and who's the husband the husband is christ if there be any other voice that is speaking in church which is not christ then the husband is quiet so the wife is supposed to be submissive only unto her husband so let the woman keep silent and wait for the husband to speak if the husband doesn't speak and the woman starts speaking we have the same scenario that happened in the garden where eve takes matters to her hands and there will be disorder in the church let the woman keep silent the woman is the, the church for the church is the wife of christ and christ is the husband but when the order of confusion comes and takes over the wife the wife is given charge to speak by the order of confusion why because the order of confusion wants to divide the church wants to confuse the church wants to instill disorder into the church i hope someone is understanding what i'm saying here the scripture is not paralyzing females not to do divine activities the scripture is trying to paralyze the author of confusion from from inviting the church they are not permitted to speak they are commanded to be under obedience the church is commanded to be under obedience the women are commanded to be under obedience the wife who is the church is commanded to be under obedience i hope someone is understanding what i'm saying and the scripture then says in first corinthians chapter 40 verse 36 what did the word of god come from you you hear that if a man think to himself to be a prophet listen to this part this part is saying if a man assumes to think that he is a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge that the things that are right unto him are the commandments of the lord but if any man be ignorant and assume that he is more spiritual let him continue in his ignorance but his ignorance shall not be practiced in the church it shall be a practice outside the ministry wherefore brethren desire to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues 
but have the knowledge of discernment, the spirit of discernment, to know what time you are speaking. Let all things be done decently and in order. Child of God, I'm here to pray for you. I'm here to pray against any form of disorder that Lucifer might try to bring in the church of Jesus Christ. I'm here to pray against any whatsoever confusion that the author of confusion wants to bring in the church. And I'm here to pray for every disciple, every partner, every sympathizer of this ministry, everyone that is a partaker of divine activity, mysteries and revelations. I'm praying for you so that confusion does not become the order of the day in the name of Jesus.